The question that I've seen more than anything else since the leaked Windows 11 ISO surfaced is, what's it like to game on? Well, since we overcame the issues of getting Windows 11 installed on bare metal yesterday, check out that video if you do want to try it yourself, although again, I highly recommend you do not install it on your own system, especially as a, an upgrade. If you've got a spare SSD and you can remove all of your other hard drives, or if you have a spare system, fair enough. Otherwise, you can load it up in a virtual machine and that works just fine, but here I have a full system with exclusively just the single Windows 11 SSD installed and no virtual machines in sight. So let's have a play with it and then I'm going to run you through some benchmarks to see if Windows 11 offers any extra performance or takes it away. Right, so we're playing a bit of Cyberpunk 2077 and in terms of performance, at least in this downtown area, we're getting over 120 at 1080p with this RTX 3080 and an 11400F, which certainly isn't bad. Um, let me just uh, bullet time this guy in the head. Uh, get buddy else, oh I missed. Okay, rapid fire time. I, uh, I'm gonna blame it on uh, the mouse. Uh, I'm not used to this. This mouse, that's 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 definitely it. Uh, take all, yeah, sure. I I did it. Wonderful. Uh, well, we're still over 100 FPS here, which is pretty decent. Uh, and while this is a 1440p monitor, and I would like to switch it to that uh, because I'm benchmarking at an EP, this will do fine. And I should also mention that what you're seeing now is actually the same recording. The benchmarks that you see later were done a touch earlier when. Uh, I wasn't recording and uh, corrupting my uh, my results. Let me just help Mr. Police Officer here. Just, I, I, I'm immune to all of this, it's fine. You're welcome, officers. It's all good. Overall, a pretty decent playing experience. There was no major stuttering or anything like that, so let's have a look at some CSGO instead. Right, so we're in and playing some CSGO, and we're still getting the usual 300 plus FPS, even at 1080p with this 3080 and the 11400F, but there is a little bit of jitteriness to it. I was feeling this earlier when I was benchmarking them directly, and it just feels just a little bit like the frame times aren't quite right. There's just a couple of frames that are a little bit too slow, and I'm gonna run away. Okay. Um, and it's just, it, it's not the smoothest experience. It's not bad, but you can notice it slightly. Now I should definitely go and get to B because I'm the last uh, counter-terrorist player and there are three of them and they've just planted the bomb. Nice. Where are they hiding? Well, there's one. There's another. I didn't get him. Where's the last one? Gonna try diffusing it, and the last one will magically appear. There he is! <laughs> Told you. <laughs> but yeah, the performance figure in the, the top right hand corner here is, is decent. I'm um, 380 FPS currently, not bad. Uh, like I said, it's just it's a little bit jittery. So that's some CSGO. Well, let's try one more game and play some Fortnite. And here we are in Fortnite, which is also playing pretty well. The first time I played it, when I was benchmarking it, it felt a little jittery, uh, much like CSGO did actually, although this is playing really well. There are these new UFO things in this, uh, this part, and uh, cool, there was someone waiting for me. Nice. With no weapons. Cool. Uh, I just, I don't really understand. I keep blowing them up, a person jumps out, and then uh, I get a ray gun but it's the same ray gun every time. I don't, I don't know, a bit weird. I don't think many people dropped here. Oh, there is one in, a, one, in one of the spacecraft. Let's go, uh, let's go chase. Come on, come on, there we go. Sweet. Well, again, this is playing remarkably well. I'm very surprised considering how sort of jittery it was when I first played it, but uh, I do have the most up-to-date graphics driver now, so that might have solved it. 
And just to prove that this is actually Windows 11, I've alt-tabbed uh, Fortnite is now in windowed mode and you can see the, the taskbar down at the bottom. But what about those performance figures? Well, starting off with Watch Dogs Legion, Windows 11 ended up running a little bit slower than my Windows 10 copy. It wasn't by a great deal. It ran at 89 FPS average on Windows 11 versus 96 on Windows 10, which is around a 7% decrease in performance. In Cyberpunk, it went from 96 FPS average to 92. Again, not a massive gap and certainly something you're unlikely to notice while playing, although a performance decrease nonetheless. CSGO also shows the decrease going from 297 FPS average to around 277, around 7% slower. Again, nothing major and at well over 250 to 270 FPS. It's not a big deal, but again, slight performance downgrade. Fortnite is also the same story, dropping 6 FPS average, going from Windows 10 to Windows 11. Although, again, running at over 200 FPS average, you're really not going to notice that missing 6 FPS. And finally, in Microsoft Flight, it's within just 1 FPS average. So not much difference there. One of the rumored reasons for Windows 11 even existing is support and optimization for Intel's upcoming Alder Lake CPUs. But since I have one of their current generation Rocket Lake CPUs already in the system, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at some of the CPU specific workloads and see if there's any differences there. Starting with Cinebench R20 and the single threaded results, it's within just three points. That's definitely close enough to call within margin of error, so no big deal on the single-threaded side. When it comes to multi-threaded, Windows 11 is ever so slightly slower. It's not by a massive margin, and I should also make it clear that the ambient temperature in my office while I was testing was a fair bit higher for Windows 11 than it was for Windows 10, so that will play a factor in some of these CPU-specific benchmarks. In Blender, the BMW scene rendered just one second faster on Windows 11, which again is close enough to call pretty much identical, and in the Gooseberry scene, it was only four seconds slower than Windows 10, and again, that's pretty much within margin of error, especially considering the temperature variances while I was testing. And in the Adobe CC suites, it seems pretty all over the place. In Premiere Pro, Windows 11 is around 4% faster, but then in After Effects, it's around 11% slower. And finally in Photoshop, it had the exact same score down to the final digit. So does that mean that Windows 11 is slower than Windows 10? Well, I would hold off on rushing to that conclusion just yet. This is a really early development build of Windows that has been leaked, and so we have no idea uh, how far along in the, the production process this is, and this could have very specific optimizations for very specific hardware, but hasn't been optimized for the general public's hardware yet either. Again, if the, the rumors are true that it is being optimized specifically for Intel's Alder Lake CPUs, it's likely that those chips and that design took priority in their development and their optimizations, and the rest of the, the conventional chips are taking a back seat for the moment. With that said, as it stands, this current version does offer slightly less performance than a, a reasonably update, up to date copy of Windows 10, but again, it's pretty much close enough across the board that I wouldn't be worried about it. If you wanna check out what I think of Windows 11 and a look around what's new, then check out that video that will pop up on the end cards in a second or up in the cards above. If you wanna try out Windows 11 yourself, uh, then I've got a video on how to make this bootable USB stick that you need if you wanna install it on bare metal. Although again, the usual disclaimer, I would not recommend installing on bare metal. Try it in a virtual machine first, uh, or if you have a spare system, then fair enough, but do not install this uh, as your main operating system and switch to it or anything like that. But either way, that guide is in the cards up above on the end cards as well. 
If you want to support the channel, there are a load of ways you can do that. Of course, hitting the subscribe button and the bell notification icon is the easiest way to stay up to date with all of these tech videos from more Windows 11 content and just general tech reviews as well. You can also check out the links in the description below, which include Patreon for access to our Money Men Discord chats or the YouTube join button if you want to get sponsor free videos as well. And there's also plenty of links to merch reviews or t-shirts like this one. This is my 2060 GPU T I designed in Blender and it's probably the easiest way you can get a GPU right now. Also the cheapest. Feel free to take a look. Otherwise, uh, there's also links to Amazon and Overclocks UK if you're buying from there. There's affiliate links for VPN options and Humble Bundle and Streamlabs OBS. So feel free to take a look at those. Like I said, check out the videos on the end cards. And that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one.